Right Pack continues to play an integral role in winning the war on terror. Now, as we speak, planes from the 445th Airlift Wing are moving men and machines from the states to the front lines. Dan Edwards went on a mission. Tonight, he begins an exclusive series of special reports with what it takes to get precious cargo off the ground. When you think of military aviation, you probably think of the mavericks of the air. I feel the need, the need for speed. But if it weren't for the hard work of C-5 cargo crews, the mavericks of the world wouldn't get off the ground. To see that for myself, I went on a mission with the 445th Airlift Wing, based out of Wright Pat. Its motto is, we deliver anything, anytime, anywhere. Run off three today, we got 85 on the fuel. Every flight begins with a detailed mission briefing. Have the engineers check that when we get out there. Today's crew is of four pilots, four load masters, three flight crew, and two flight engineers. A mixture of active duty and seasoned reservists. No cargo out of here. They fly what they call channel missions, two to three times a week, delivering supplies to all branches of the military. Our week-long mission includes stops at McGuire Air Base, New Jersey, then overseas to Germany, and then on to the Persian Gulf region. Well, as we load gear onto the bus for our week-long trip, crews are preparing our C-5. But before we even get our gear onto the massive plane, a mechanical problem delays our departure. As a matter of fact, our flight was delayed because of a breakdown in the fuel system line. And speaking of fuel, there's 51,000 gallons in these wings. And these GE engines, they gulp in 42 tons of air per minute. This is one of the biggest problems with the biggest bird in the Air Force fleet. C-5 takes 13 maintenance hours for every hour of flight. But when it's in the air, it's capable of carrying more than 130 tons. Well, the distance of the Wright Brothers' first flight is less than the length of a C-5 cargo hold. And up above, there are 100 miles of wires and four miles of tubing on the C-5. To get us back on schedule, the skills of the flight engineers are put to the test. A couple more minutes and we'll be on the road. Well, the mission does get back on track, but not before another frustrating event that threatens the mission. We'll have that tomorrow for you of day two of the mission of the 445th. Aboard the C-5, I'm Dan Edwards, two news on your side. And this story is brought to you by the IMAX Theater at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. I'll just try to imagine the kind of teamwork and dedication that it takes to move 145 tons of people and provisions anywhere in the world on very short notice. Well, crews with Wright Pat's 445th Airlift Wing do it every day. Only on two, Dan Edwards shows you the critical mission that carries on despite frustrating delays for repairs. Got her all paneled up and uh it's got a couple more minutes and we'll be on the road. Oh, after a 36 hour delay, the European leg of this mission for the 445th Airlift Wing at Wright Pat is back on. Check pallet. The sun is going down in the Miami Valley, but the day for this crew is just beginning. Your uh, departure frequency in Victor 2 there. Michelle, you to to run up. As the navigator checks the readings for every system on this complicated aircraft, Check. Pilots Philip Hawkeye Pierce and Michael Champagne await another inbound aircraft. Bridge 9005, heavy back to position, hold runway 85 left. Before turning this beast of burden loose. On board, the narrow aisle leads to what the crew calls their big apartments as they settle in for the two hour flight to New Jersey. Earplugs do little to muffle the roar of the four turbine engines that pull us through the air at about 500 miles an hour. Master Sergeant John Wesley made me a cup of tea. I asked him about the many hours he spends away from his wife and two daughters. My wife's used to it because I met her when I was on active duty as a, a 20, when I was 22. I'm now 42, so she kind of grew into it with me, I guess. So She knows what to expect when she signed on. Huh? Absolutely. And they like the gift from all over the world, so that takes the, the pain off a little bit. Across the aisle, Captain Adam Fink passes the long hours by reading. The reason we did this, we want to show the people what the 445th does every day. Right. What, what do you think they don't really realize? Um, I don't know. I, I, 
probably just how much goes into getting one of these missions off the ground. Uh, as, you, as you can see, it took a lot to, to get this thing going with uh, all the various maintenance issues uh, being delayed today and just keeping these aircraft flying. He too misses his wife, but Tech Sergeant Todd Gannad says the job does have its rewards. I've been to all seven continents. There's. I don't know of very many other people that have, have actually done that. The 13-man crew made up of reservists and active duty members are required to do continual training to keep their skills and status current. I'm what's called a traditional reservist, so I'm only actually required to do my one weekend a month, two weeks a year, which turns out to be like 45 days a year. It's just after 10 p.m. now in New Jersey. The crew loads the plane with the precision of a choreographed dance. The plane actually kneels 28 inches, while the front and rear open to accommodate loading. With the cargo secured, the crew is ready for its long nine-hour flight to Germany. The time zone change will rob them of six hours of sleep. Well, it's been a long day for the crew, and while they grab some shut-eye, another event is unfolding that will drastically change this mission. I'll have that story for you tomorrow. Somewhere over the Atlantic Ocean, I'm Dan Edwards. Two news on your side. All right, Dan, sleep well. And this story brought to you by the IMAX Theater at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. Crews of Wright Pat's 445th Airlift Wing don't just move supplies and equipment from the states into war zones. They also move precious human cargo. And tonight, only on two, Dan Edwards on a mission that brings a hero home. After a night stay in Germany at the Ramstein Air Base, it's off the bus and back onto our home away from home, Big C-5, for the most dangerous leg of our mission downrange into the Persian Gulf region. During pre-flight checks, flight engineer Jason Gum, however, spots a leak in engine number two. It's leaking highly flammable hydraulic fluid, once again delaying our mission. Well, as the flight engineers work on the problem, he and some crew members use the downtime to get in some exercise with cornhole. Even Commander Pierce got into the friendly competition. We also had time to throw a real football in Germany. Well, after a five-hour delay, we're back in the air, headed to a real hot spot. Because of security concerns, I cannot reveal our exact location. Anxiety about our next stop leaves the crew restless. Well, it's four o'clock in the morning here at this base somewhere in the Persian Gulf region. It's in the 90s as the crew is unloading cargo, some of it undisclosed. And the reason they do it here uh, in the nighttime is that one, it's a little cooler because during the day it gets up to 115 degrees. And two, at night, this big bird's less of a target. The fatigue crew wastes no time offloading cargo, but this is where our mission takes a dramatic turn. The 445th was diverted from our next scheduled stop of Marone, Spain, back to Germany to deliver the body of a fallen comrade. After a brief yet dignified memorial service, this precious cargo was secured for our trip out of the Middle East. The long flight back to Germany gave the crew a chance to reflect upon their mission that now has a new meaning. It's mixed feelings. When you first get there, you're obviously sad to see one of your comrades fallen, uh, but you're humble at the same time, and there's honor in bringing them back home to the States. It's the seat for, uh, for a successful uh, democratic uh, new republic in, in Iraq. So it's probably, uh, we'll be able to see that in the future, whether, it's gonna, whether that was a good sacrifice or not. Tomorrow, the emotional conclusion of our mission with the 445th. Dan Edwards, 2 News on your side. And again, this story brought to you by the IMAX Theater at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. Members of the 445th Airlift Wing at Wright Pat Air Force Base are world travelers who fight fatigue even as they manage danger. The jumping off point for their missions to the Middle East is Germany. Now only on 2, Dan Edwards shows you how they prepare for the dangerous leg that will take them into the teeth of the war on terror. Loaded with over 123 pounds of cargo, the crew of the C-5 defy gravity and time zones. Lights come out. They catch up with the sun 35,000 feet over the Atlantic Ocean and grab a snack, the first time they've eaten in 12 hours. 
while those lucky enough to fall asleep are tucked away in cramped cabins. The roar of the monstrous jet engines drowns out the snoring. And I sense a feeling of brotherhood among these weary warriors. You have some of the same, uh, you know, abrasions with certain members like you do with brothers maybe that you don't get along with so well, but then you have others who just, who just do anything for you. At 5 in the afternoon, we land in Germany at Ramstein Air Base, one of the largest Air Force installations in Europe. As the crew hustles to move cargo, I meet an airman from Ohio who bears a resemblance to Radar O'Reilly. He told me he has the best job ever. It's the best thing I've done by far. Why is that? I, I get to travel the world. How many other times in the civilian life would you be able to be here in Germany or travel the world for free? Inside the terminal, another Miami Valley connection, David and Lenine Mueller of Bell Fountain. David was stranded here at Ramstein 35 years ago as a weather forecaster in a bunker tucked away in the rolling hills just beyond the runway. That bunker, as I understand it, had been at one time the western front, the, west, the command post for the western front of the Nazis as they were facing the Allies during the late portions of World War II. Well, the Allies would eventually take over the coveted bunker, also using it as a forecast center. I worked there sometimes forecasting the weather without ever seeing the sun because of the length of the German winters. Both expressed their appreciation for the USO and the military that keeps us safe every day. Consider the task, the enormity of the logistics involved in delivering supplies to our warfighters all over the world, handled every day by many people at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Well, it's the end of day three of our journey with the crew of the 445th. Tomorrow, our most dangerous leg of this mission, and something happens that touches each man on this crew. We'll have that for you tomorrow as we continue our journey with the mission of the 445th. On the C-5, somewhere over the Persian Gulf, I'm Dan Edwards, 2 News on your time. And the story is brought to you by the IMAX Theater at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. Libby? The long trip home for a fallen warrior is the end of a key mission for the 445th Airlift Wing based at Wright Pat. After a grueling week in Europe and the Persian Gulf, the team returns ready to serve America at a moment's notice. Only on to Dan Edwards shows you why they're so proud to fly anywhere in the world. Well, after a grueling 26-hour day, the crew of the 445th finally gets some well-deserved time off in the beautiful German city of Mannheim. In the heart of this vibrant city, picturesque fountains and American-influenced teen rap groups, I rapped a bit with the heart of this mission, Lieutenant Colonel Philip Hawkeye Pierce. Couldn't ask for a more professional, dedicated bunch of individuals. My life depends on them doing their job correctly, and their life depends on me doing my job correctly. A job made more difficult by an aging fleet of aircraft. We get the leftovers of usually the other planes that other wings don't want. But that's all right, so we, we do the best we can and we fly just as well as they do. Master Sergeant Chuck Fritz is grateful to be flying after being laid off from Airborne Express. I'm uh, indebted to the squadron and to the uh, 445th for the, uh, the flights and the work that they're able to provide me and my family. Uh, the support. Uh, uh, if I didn't have the reserves, then, then I would really be on hard times. Besides the people in this squadron and the wing, we, we got a lot of quality people that, I mean, it, it's a lot of fun to go on the road and hang out with, with people like, like we have here. You know, we work hard and we play hard. And play they did, showing off American culture on the sidewalks of Mannheim, even teaching a young German boy how to throw an American football. But back at the base, another discouraging breakdown occurred. It delayed our return home by two days. You know, in the military, the only constant is change, but even a constant breakdown of the big C-5 never detoured the 445th from doing their job. But one change that happened did have a profound effect of everyone on board as we witnessed the final flight of a fallen comrade aboard the 9005. Me personally, every single time, it's it's very hard, and uh, I'll never forget any of them. It's really hard. And then the young Marine today, to bring him on the first leg home, it's uh, indescribable, heart-wrenching uh, to have to bring back a casket. 
Well, finally, back in the U.S. airspace, below us, the icebergs that dot the North Atlantic. I want to taste this mustard. And time to cook up one last meal on board German brats. So eight days and 8,000 miles later, the crew of the 445th is finally back at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. And you know, it's been a privilege to fly with these people. So the next time you see one of these big C-5s flying over the Miami Valley, I want you to remember the brave men and women of the 445th, not only carrying tons of equipment to our war fighters all over the world, but also carrying the message of America's freedom all over the world as well. So proudly, with the 445th and videographer Don Hatcher, I'm Dan Edwards, 2 News on your side. And all of Dan's stories were brought to you by the IMAX Theater at the National Museum of the United States Air Force.